Hey, what's going on? We are at the 2019 Honda CR450R launch at Cheney Ranch. I am joined by Lars Lindstrom, who uh, is one of the techs here on hand to help the magazine guys set up their bikes. Um, but he has a long history of uh, uh, top level racing and championships and all that. So I thought I would ask him a little bit about Hondas for uh, some specific Honda setup tips. So Lars, the uh, CR450, we'll start with the basics. Uh, first thing you should do is set your sag on the bike, right? Because otherwise it's not balanced, it's not gonna turn right. What's the sweet spot for sag on a, on a CR450R current generation? Uh, for the 19 model, uh, we're recommending 107 sag mm -hmm. for it to, to have the, the proper balance. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you can play with that. It's not set in stone. You can do yeah. whatever you want. But uh, for yeah, for what most people feel like is the proper balance, we're 107, 107 seems to be about the right number. I mean, it's crazy for me being an old timer is that I remember when sag used to be like 98, right? And it's yeah. like sag's gotten more and more. Uh, it's increased more through the years. But obviously that's with the new geometry and new frame styles but uh so uh i've seen people set sag guys right tippy toying on the ground other times someone holding the front front brake or front end for the guy and bouncing what's the proper technique as far as you're concerned um as far as i'm concerned there is no real proper technique other than try to sit in the same spot twice mm -hmm. which is difficult yeah. and uh and the more that we kind of mess with it the more i feel like in talking with my mentor Sam over here uh, is that the preload is more important than the actual sag number mm -hmm. so if your number is way off and you're cranking tons of turns mm -hmm. then you know kind of remember how many turns you're, you're going and uh, uh, but the most important thing is sit sit in the same spot twice have somebody hold you up in the balance in the balance point mm -hmm. and um, you know that that should give you the correct number that you're looking for Okay. Um, oil. When you get a bike from the dealership, should you change the oil before you take it out for the first time, or are Honda dealerships spot on? <laughs> well, you should check your oil level. I mean, you can run a little bit extra oil. That's totally fine on this bike. And uh, um, but it comes with Honda oil, you know, GN4. So the first ride that you do on your brand new bike is totally fine to ride with the, 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 the oil that comes with it. And then I would recommend changing it after that. Just, you know, after the first ride. Yeah. Just, you know, change oil, change the oil filter. Um, just if in case there's any edges that are, you know, shaved off of any parts from the inside, <laughs> usually it's fine, but you know, it's not a bad idea. Okay. So us magazine dorks, we get a bike and we just ride it like wide open the first time we get on it. But yeah, you know, I've got friends who will buy their bikes and they're doing the whole heat cycle, like riding it, letting it cool, and then riding several times before they go wide open on it. Is that a myth or is that something that's probably should be done for the longevity of the machine? There's probably something to it, especially when you have somebody like uh, Eli Tomac or Ken Rocks and somebody that's hard on the bike. I say Eli Tomac because he's hard on bikes. Um, Kenny, not so much, but um, there's probably something to it for that. You know, for sure, we do definitely do a braking process on the dyno when we have a brand new engine. But for a guy like you and me, we're, we're the, the level Our of... Our wide open is not really wide. Yeah, like the level of somebody at a top level, like a Ken or a Eli or a Cole or something like that, to even somebody that's pretty quick, like, you know, let me think, you know, Pingree or something like mm -hmm. that, the level of how hard they are on the bike, it, it decreases like yeah. exponentially. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So what you think you're doing to your bike riding it hard is not that, it's not that hard on that bike. Mm -hmm. For the most part, okay. unless you're somebody like like you like Tomac or something. <laughs> How much oil on these bikes? Oil uh, change with the filter, without. When we when we well, just you always do the filter at your level. No, not not every time because uh, you know it depends uh, depends on what we're riding. Supercross isn't hard on bikes, so you know like we, we might not change oil as often. But when we do um, when we do without changing the oil filter, we put in about 1250, mm -hmm. yeah, which is which is a little bit extra for yeah. sure um this is also on the race bike that has a different clutch cover so i probably recommend about 1200 mm -hmm. and then um when we do it with changing the oil filter also we do 1300 yeah. you could put in 1250 mm -hmm. it's it, a little extra oil is not going to hurt um and uh yeah that's that's about what yeah that's doing. what you mentioned is a something worth addressing like guy that buys a aftermarket clutch cover right Sometimes they're spaced out further, so there's a greater capacity. 
If you put the same amount of oil in, it's effectively bathing the clutch in a little bit less oil, right? So, I mean, is that something you need to be aware of? If you're changing to aftermarket clutch cover, you need to put more oil in? Yeah, you can definitely run a little bit extra oil. It's, it's not that big of a deal. It's not it's not going to break your bike or do anything. Uh, but, you know, extra 50 cc's or something, 100 cc's. Like I said. blow it out if it's too much, right? Exactly, yeah. So all you got to do is drain it later in the in the tube under the air, air box. But uh, it's not a bad thing. Too much oil is not really a bad thing. Too little oil is a bad thing. Yeah. Okay, so every bike has its little nuances and uh, trademark things, right? So... Like, uh, for instance, the Cowies, they always wear out the chain, the, the swing arm chain buffer and the chain guide because it's too hard material or something. But uh, so there's things that with each bike you should probably have spares of on hand. Um, also, nuts and bolts that you should probably keep an eye on. Anything like that with the Honda in your experience? Um, in my experience, we're, I'm pretty lucky to get to work on a Honda. But, and I'm, I know I'm going to sound too corporate right now, but the bolts have always been known to be to be yeah. better on a Honda than, than most other bikes and uh, it's still true to this day you know they, they usually if the bolt is tightened properly it's not going to fall off the only thing could be maybe a seat bolt from the especially a bigger rider moving the seat back and forth and, and the the right seat bolt might loosen up so you can definitely keep an eye on that um, the skid plate bolt on the bottom has a rib nut and a lot of people tighten the heck out of that thing and it uh, it's too much and with no grease and it, it can uh, it can start spinning in the frame, um, so that's something to keep an eye out for uh, also. See anything else? Um, hey, how about this? So out the races, um, I saw the Geico Honda guys washing the bike with a baggie over the left side grip and the kill switch. Is that a good idea to do to keep water out of the kill switch? Yeah, I mean we we do have a pretty um, you know over the top kill switch with that does mode switching and now with the new bikes we also have the start mode that you know is is also included in that it's on the electric start button right? the electric start button but it, the the actual flashing is flashed purple on the on the kill switch light so um, there's a lot of electronics on the bikes now in general mm -hmm. so it's not a bad idea to cover that and to keep water from getting in and yeah. making your bike you know hard to start or something like that okay. Well, uh, anything else you think of at all? Oh, let's talk about chain adjustment. Yeah. Uh, I think in the past, CRF has had a different recommended level. And then I think the Honda, does it get looser as you compress it or does it get tighter like all the other bikes? Um, I mean, it gets, it gets uh, looser and then, you know, it tightens up right in the middle and then it gets looser in the top. Yeah. So, so how much adjustment? We, how much on, slack do we On have? the race team, we, we try to measure right on the swing arm right behind the chain slider behind the chain slider behind the chain okay. slider. so you're measuring from metal to the center of the, one of the chain pins mm -hmm. and we try to do it about 65 millimeters 65 mm -hmm. 70 millimeters right in that window mm -hmm. and that seems to be the proper amount that we have when you if you were to take your uh, shock off for example and move it through the stroke then yeah. it would just be snug at the right spot you don't want it to be too tight obviously and you don't want it to be too loose yeah. obviously so talk about yeah. the hazards of too tight or too loose? I mean, too loose, you're, you're going to risk the chain coming off in, in a crash and uh, and a lot of unnecessary wear, like especially on your chain slider, you know, your chain guide that it's going to wear wear all that out pretty quickly. Um, too tight, I mean, you're risking uh, breaking the transmission, breaking the, the, the rear wheel or, or uh, ripping the, the sprocket off or something like that. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and like premature wear in your chain, the thing's going to wear out a lot quicker. So, um, you definitely want to be in the sweet spot with that. Cool. Hey, okay, Lars Lindstrom from uh, American Honda. Thank you for your tips and your knowledge and your insight. Yeah, no worries. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.